Claudio dash K. <laughs> PA cuddle. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough we make these, you know, we see these goofy things online about people doing Zoom calls when they're not in the tech industry. Right. What does it say? When you hear me now? Hey! Yeah, yes. All right. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty much right. What it is, is if I restart my laptop, it doesn't pick up the microphone for some reason. I have to like, unplug it and plug it in again. <laughs> and suddenly it's okay. There was, there was a, a series of kernel updates that did not take nicely to my USB-C dock. And the same was happening, but now it's magic. Mm -hmm. It could be that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I could talk about Linux problems for a long time. Um, anyway, <laughs> what I was going to say was what happened was um, I watched the video where Darren Shepard um, talked about his issues with multi arc stuff. And yeah, it kind of made a lot of sense to me. And I kind of approached it from the point of view of writing a registry implementation uh, and what we could do to help. Now, I did like write a proposal and uh, I think I've linked out there, maybe we can go through it briefly. But the problem with the proposal is that it, it comes from the point of view of what can we do without changing anything? Okay, so it's like, what could I hack together like in an existing registry, if you like? Um, whereas a better solution would be to address it, uh, you know, within the standard and, and the client a bit better. Um, but that being said, uh, we can quickly go through it. Uh, is it worth me sharing my screen and opening the document there? Or Yeah, sure. And is somebody banging a ball in the background? I'm not sure if that's... I'm actually going to guess that's more like a cereal bowl than a, a ball, you know. Okay. Um, so can you, see, she may, can you see the screen? Yep. And it does help just to kind of walk, have you point at things that were... It, it's a bit it, wide, but link, yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Hang on. Maybe I can make my just short. I think I shared the window, so hopefully I can just do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that better? Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. So it's actually a pretty simple idea. Um, all it is is um, that I have. I mean, I wrote this up very quickly. So I came up with a stupid path name. Um, obviously, it'd be a better idea to use something different than Munger. But basically, the idea is rather than the client being responsible for building the OCI index or the manifest list or whatever you want to call it, um, we can place a burden on the registry. Um, so all it is is we have uh, a certain path um, that includes the platform and the OS. Um, and I was trying to, you know, this afternoon, I was thinking, can we get that automatically from somewhere else? But I don't suppose we can, because it's not an OCI manifest. But anyway, so the idea was you do Docker push to something like um, AMD64 Linux, then actually the name of the image you're interested in. Um, and the registry itself will take care of building an OCI index and placing that test, test multi. And if one already exists, um, it'll update it for this given architecture or add a new one, depending on what's the correct thing. And that's pretty much it. So the idea is after you've done that, you can then just do a pull from here and that'll be like a multi-arc or, you know, that'll be an OCI index. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. It's, there's a couple of interesting things about it that have uh, come up. I mean, there's, there's lots of challenges too, but it, what's interesting is the, um, you've, you've accounted for like, how do you deal with the path that I want it to be under, but I want this tooling to be underneath it that, says, you know, the Munger tool, um, take the AMD64 and update that manifest. So makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is frankly a bit hacky. Um, it's just a proposal. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much more to say about it. It's really quite quick. Um, yeah, one thing we could do is try and make it, a, one thing that is a bit frustrating is that we don't have the, platform and OS. And I guess that should maybe actually be part of like the, should that be somewhere else as well? This must have been discussed with other OCI um, stuff, like the manifest and stuff. What do you mean you don't have it? Um, well, it's not in the manifest, right? It's only in the index. Oh, I see what you're Sorry? I, I now I see what you're saying. So in other words, the, the, manif the manifest, manifest well, be almost 
whatever recursive, the manifest list or uh, yeah, image index. You're right. Duh. Okay. Sorry. Name change. Yes. The image index has the pointer to the, you know, with the platform OS fields. So, yeah. But doesn't, I thought a manifest directly has it in its config object. You have to look, you config. actually, you have to, you have to, you Correct. have to fetch the, um, so if you get an image index manifest list, it'll point to an object that's a generic manifest. I, you know, we, we, I guess we could add an annotation there or something, but right now, if you want to figure out what its architecture is, you actually have to go fetch the config JSON object and then marshal okay. it out. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, none of the, none of it's a straightforward operation except for the manifest list. But I could actually get rid of this thing because I could just like open the config object and get rid of this platform OS stuff. I mean, it would, it'd be it'd be an extra hop and some marshalling, but sure. Yeah. Well, it's better than the client having to do it. Although, then again, it's maybe nice that they're explicit because uh, so they know. I don't know. I was about to say it's maybe nice being explicit. Because if you're pushing to this path, you clearly want to build a multi-arc image. So if this doesn't match a thing in the config, it would give you an error. I don't know. And the other thing I was going to say was, I guess we could build, you know, I could build a Docker plugin to make it a bit nicer, potentially. Wait, is Phil here? I don't see Phil. Um, the, the classic problem that we have, in addition to spec and other ones, is, um, there are lots of, there are different clients, but there's not too many different clients and we all use them for various different reasons. Um, obviously the Docker client, the container D client, build, build X and, and so forth. The, the bigger problem that you have with a change like this is it's most registries have different, have unique implementations for various reasons. So you basically can propose a spec. You could even provide some amount of code if you, you know, did go, you'd get some amount of registries, you did Python, maybe another's, whatever. Um, and then it, then it really comes back to which registries support it, um, which I'm going to turn to Vincent over here and say, where's the capabilities thing that you call it somewhere else? And I always forget what you call it because we really, really, really need that. So the registries can say, <laughs> yes, I do support this feature. Um, yeah. We the the extensions proposal that I think is is died on the vine because after we've but some some kind of like that was the 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 idea of saying you know if there was extensions or features or whatnot that feature flags kind of thing but because um, I totally agree that having this on the registry certainly simplifies things because I think it was Darren was bringing up that you have different build systems that are building different platforms and architectures at different types. And it's really hard to get a good quorum across all of those to know when am I done? When do I build the index? Um, yeah. And then there's, you know, various race conditions and other things that wind up happening when you're updating an index uh, from outside. So putting it in the registry certainly helps consolidate that in one place. The problem is now you need every registry to implement it. And certain features registries will because they, you know, there's a business in you know, need around it for, for various reasons. And others are like, yeah, that's a good tooling thing, whatever. Um, and then there's the other side of what Phil's been doing is basically do better client tooling that says that, you know, as long as registries support index, which we're seeing more and more do, then um, it just works. But then you're back to the other problems of how do you know when all the images are built? Um, I think the, the larger question we have is, and this is coming up in some of the notary conversations, is do we have the right model? Like, is there something else that should be done? Like, if I push the same tag, I don't know, I'm just totally, I hadn't even thought about this. If I push the same tagged reference to, and it's different, it happens to be different architectures to the same repo, is an index automatically created? Um, I don't even know what that means, honestly. Uh, but I just, like, we're dancing around these two problems of registry implementations versus client tooling. You know, if we were to crack this, because there's no easy answer, what would the what would it look like? Because I think you were trying to say, Adrian, like, how do I do this without changing anything? It's like, okay, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I only came out from that point of view because that's what I could do, if you see what I mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop sharing for the minute. I think you've all seen the document. There we go. Um, yeah, so that was about it. Um, I don't know. So what, what were you saying about um, a better representation? Are we considering uh, replacing OCI index, OCI index, or is that a potential consideration? Anything's a potential, but yeah, there's, I don't think there's momentum around that. There's, we are um, discussing enhancing index so that we have the config object on it so we can figure out what is the index represent? Is it a multi art manifest or is it a, um, a signature object, for instance, for the Node Week 2 work? Or is it a CNAB for things that, you know, that, that they're doing? Um, I, I think the, the challenge that we always face is how do we enhance without breaking the ecosystem? Um, so like one of the, we were talking about signatures are basically just another manifest that you want to reference another another artifact in the registry. Well, that's exactly what indexes do. So that's why we went down a path. Maybe I had a manifest that knows how to reference another manifest, but that's a pretty substantial change that would break existing top of mind. So yeah, yeah. And there's a multi-hop thing you talked about a minute ago, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's the, I guess, what, I, what do others think? Like there, there's some people that do represent other registries, you know, we, we would, would love to see the enhancement, but as we've also seen that unless something is more available across multiple registries, you know, it, it's hard to get good adoption because people are getting, getting images from different registries and moving around for all kinds of best practices. So we kind of need some consistency. Um, or at least the ability to drive consistency. That's why I really like Vincent's proposal is like, here is the enhancements that this registry supports. And when somebody comes up and says, hey, why doesn't registry foo support this feature? Because all the other registries do, or I have this customer that needs it, whatever motivates that company to do it. Then there's a spec they could point at and a capability they can add. And then there's customer demand to drive it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll, 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 okay. So, that's, that's good feedback of um, the proposal there. And now I'm trying to remember why we, that last call that I had on, with like Jimmy and Josh and Der J uh, Derek, we thought about scrapping that um, extensions proposal entirely was just, uh, I, for, I forget the details, I'll have to look back. I thought I'd commented on the issue, but I do, there is a space for those kind of feature flags. Yeah, we definitely need something. Oh, but it's, I don't want to get sidetracked too much. No, 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 that's good though, because it's the same kind of stuff as far as like, if we fold notary in and I have been absent from all the notary progr progress in the last months. But that was yeah. the main use case for it. But this would be interesting as well. Yeah, or any of them. Like this, but like even the conformance test that Josh has been driving, it's like, you know, the, the conformance tests are, are pretty, it, getting the infrastructure in place was really hard, right? Because we found all the kind of nuances. But the next question is, great, we can push holistic catalog and something. Registries are so much more than that. But we don't really have anything that says what those other things are. So if there was this, list of extensions and then registries could light up, hey, yeah, I do support this. And whether it's peer pressure or customer driven or just awareness to know what's available, um, it would be great. And that's, you know, I, I, had, I actually had, sorry, I'm gonna take another tangent. The, the interesting thing about multi-arc index is trying to figure out where is the need? Like how, like if you're building java.net, Debian, uh, not Debian, sorry, java.net, you know, some runtime images or you're shipping some software, I have an accounting software package and for some reason my customers want to run around Linux or Windows. I would want to ship that software as a multi-arc image. I want to ship that runtime as a multi-arc runtime. That seems like a pretty small percentage of overall customers that are building images. And you know, we, we tend to build tooling for the masses and 
Um, and, and then there's always that there's a that, that, that the tail of ecosystem. Is there some? Is there a larger pool of this that I'm missing? Of why we want to, you know, how could we get better tooling for multi arc images, or do we have enough? And the, the community that's building them is doing what they need. Um, I think harm is going to get more and more important. I think that's the main one. Sorry, what's going to get more important? Just harm. harm. ARC 64 and such. Oh, oh, sorry. Right. So it's, but those are the same products, the same images that are already building multi arc. You're just going to add another one to it. So they already have to deal with two or three. So adding a fourth would just make it yet another, like they're already creating index. So now they have to add one more to that index list. Are there, is there a growing need of customers that need to build multi arc index? that we should invest, like the signature stuff, it's not a multi-arc index, right? It's, it's definitely gonna use, well, we, we believe it's gonna use index, so we definitely want index to be around. Correct. But it's a different type of tooling than what we would use for multi-arc. So I'm just trying to get a sense of what's the opportunity for multi-arc indexes and what's the level of tooling investments that we should think about. Uh, I would say that the embedded and IoT community would definitely be interested in uh, building multi-arch. I mean, they've already started looking at containers to run on Raspberry Pis and things. So even that it's a, in the IoT community, there's already like pretty, there's so much distribution of images and it's not just hard software packages, it's just like even within one company, my custom app, I have multiple architectures that I need to build. Yeah, I would say like for edge computing, that's fair. There's definitely a, a need over there. They're already, there's already like work uh, being done on EdgeX, I think. That's where VMware is involved, is EdgeX Foundry, and they definitely build containers and put them on Raspberry Pis. Cool. That's a good point. I, I, I hadn't thought of the IoT multi arc stuff. So, did you, Adrian, did you have any more conversations with Phil or Darren on what you were thinking about some next steps? Um, not really, basically. I, I mean, I did send it to Darren. He's like, um, you know, he said, yeah, it actually sounds pretty much like what he was thinking. But I didn't really hear much back after that. Um, I was considering, I mean, it should be fairly simple. I was considering just doing like, a, uh, you know, adding a proof of concept endpoint to try to registry I've been working with. Um, but I mean, nobody really uses trial, so I, I don't know how much feedback I get on it. Yeah, this is, this is not dissimilar from the idea I had of, which is basically the idea that Steve just pitched of you just have something. I, my idea was a proxy that sits in between you and the registry you want to push to. Mm. That when it, when you push an image to it, it checks the architecture and updates a manifest list on the actual on the actual registry but the hard part there is that the image config doesn't have enough metadata like things like variant are missing from the image config oh is it yeah so i love this idea and actually i i would make it bi-directional um, because there are some clients for which specifying the platform that you want from the manifest list is difficult or impossible like mm. even in docker Specifying the platform that you want to pull explicitly is an experimental feature. It requires the experimental flag enabled on your Dr. Damon today. So, Which most, pe most people don't run. Right. Yeah. So it, in, in official images, especially we've initially, it was an implementation detail that we were pushing each architecture to its own organizational repository. Which was terrible. It ended up being a, a useful feature for our users to be able to explicitly override the daemon and say, I need this particular architecture's image. So yeah. my, my feedback on this proposal would be, I love it. I would implement it as a registry proxy and um, I would change the platform specifiers to match the, the platform specifiers that container D uses where it's OS slash arch with an optional slash variant. 
you yeah. have to make sure to extract the OS version for Windows images too, which is in the config. So I have a question about that. Uh, if we were to choose to, um, you know, have have different paths for different platforms, would that be something uh, in the spec, like how to resolve those paths? When you say paths, are we talking about the namespace of the image that you push? Right, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the namespaces. So right now, uh, I am trying to figure out how to implement the namespace resolution from image and tag to the actual paths, and they're different for different registries. Um, this would complicate that if registries get to say like, okay, our, our uh, whatever, uh, x86 path is here and our uh, ARM path is there, and we have our own special resolver, uh, mm -hmm. so you can pick and choose. Would your would the OCI spec then include like a spec around path uh, namespace resolution? So having gone through this with ACR, MCR, .NET, and our integration with Docker Hub, I can tell you that if if because we've seen people do this, including some I think it's the Kubernetes images that have. Uh, they build different architectures and different namespaces paths. Um, to go that path basically says we give up on index, multi-arc index. And it does get complex because different registries do implement different pathing capabilities. Like in ACR, we actually don't limit how many slashes you put in it. Um, the Docker client does a 256, which winds up being really long, it turns out. Um, so I, I would, and not, but not all registries do that. And, but I, I think I would love, personally, I would love to see us fix the index problem, then try to exacerbate it with m multiple namespaces to try to figure out the architectures. That, that would be my personal opinion. Like the, cause we have done this, like there are Microsoft ships a number of multi-arc image types, whether it be .NET or Java or um, even Windows with the, what it does is its variants. And it, it is a tool in pain, but it does work. And the, that's kind of why I was going down the tooling experiences and where the investment. For the consumer, the clients just work generally. There is this, there is some problems where the, a single Docker host can handle multiple architectures. I'm hoping ContainerD is gonna make that better. Um, but the consumer tooling of all of this is, is in the, a good space. The problem is the authoring tooling isn't quite up to par, which, you know, a lot of times that's just the burden of the mass problem. So anyway, that would be my two cents is that let's not, it, before we give up on multi-arc index and go down a, a pathing place, a pathing namespace thing, what can we do on that? And, and for the sake of time, what I was going to suggest since this is the wonderful world of open source community is there is no, it's not like you're making a pitch to a particular company named after something that would just convince them to invest in all the tooling. Um, that's kind of evolved. That's kind of the purpose of the open container initiative is it's venue neutrality is uh, would love to see a group of people that are really passionate about this space and keep on championing it and bring a proposal forward. So like Adrian, if you can get, I know Phil has been invested in it. He's got some tooling around it. And, and Darren, if you guys want to keep on churning on it and make a, and, and say, Hey, this is what we'd like to do and build some consensus around it. That, that would be the best way that I would suggest going forward. And then it's just a choice, like, is it really worth it to you? Because I think there's something there. I definitely think you know, there's definitely a, a there there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I see this proposal very much as a, as a stop gap. Um, I'm not sure what the right solution is. I think it comes back to your point about um, indexes and stuff. But I, I would focus on what do you think the right answer? Like we've had this conversation quite a bit in this in this forum of there's the right way, but then there's the way I can just get it done. Yeah. There's a certain point where we wind up with just a junk drawer of stuff because we keep on hacking things in. And I think so far the group has been really good around acknowledging what the gaps are. And like we went through this with artifacts, like we went up using the config object and we went around a lot of different places and, and actually it kind of works. 
Um, where there's other stuff with index where we want to add the config object, that is a change, but we're figuring out how to make the change in a, in a minimally an impactful way with a, a higher value. So I would, as opposed to like, there was an easy answer to just use annotations, which to me was a total hack and I, I hated that idea, but you know, details are not important. So I guess my, my point is I'd encourage you to come up with what you think the right model is. Um, think about what the implications are for the existing clients that would be interacting with registries or pulling artifacts from a registry. And, um, and I'm happy to work with you on you know, some of the stuff that we went through, but what, what is the right solution? And if that turns out to be the right solution and it's worth the investment, then I, you know, I think you'll get support from everybody here. Yeah, I mean, one thing you could do is just to make it a bit cleaner is have, you know, pass, if you want to pass it rather than get the config, have it somewhere else. So you'd have like a, you know, in a post, have the OS and ARC details or have it in a, I don't know, a header wouldn't be very good, but it's not very nice putting it in the, the URL. Right. Yeah, you sort of need a new API here. Yeah. And we've been doing some stuff around using headers. You'll see some stuff come up into the new distribution PR for Notary that um, we're going to pass the media type in as in the header because the encoding doesn't really work in the URL. So there are some other places to do that. Okay. All right. So um, awesome. I think yeah, we're definitely interested. I think the big question, like the, let, let's, I'm happy to work with you offline and with you and Darren and however you want to do it. Um, I think the big question you have is. Is it a client tooling, which is what Phil's been doing, or is there a registry side that, you know, and both of them have their pros and cons? Yeah. Yeah. I There's nothing there. wrong with having a multi org API for registries. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I think then who's next here? Second thing. Hello. Oh, uh, yes, I had in this on the agenda. Can you hear me? Welcome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yes, because I'm trying to uh, add a new feature in uh, RunC and in the CI runtime spec. So I put this um, document describing um, uh, what it is about and uh, a diagram about how it will work. Uh, so um, I don't know, I, maybe I can go through that or um, uh, I don't have a cut to show, I'm, uh, I just started uh, work on that. Um, so th this is about SecCon and uh, in, uh, there is a new feature in the Linux kernel to uh, instead of deciding statically to accept or reject um, a system call is to defer the decision to um, to another process. And uh, so it sends a message to another process, an agent that will uh, make, that is about to make the system call on the bear for the process in the container. And that's something that um, LXD uh, is doing. Um, they are pushing the, uh, the code in the kernel to support that. And uh, now LXD has this uh, support as well. So um, what I want to do is to do the same in uh, RunC. Um, uh, and it needs some change, uh, some updates in the uh, OCI spec for that. Um, so in the document, I put some links to uh, the Linux commits that are necessary for that. It requires a very recent Linux kernel for the last uh, features. Um, like uh, Linux 5.9, which is uh, not released yet, uh, and other things too. Um, what I would like to do is uh, it's not tied to a sp specific feature. Yet there is different use case for that. For example, for LXD, what they do is, uh, for example, um, support uh, mounts. Uh, usually, um, when containers are not privileged, they cannot mount uh, anything, uh, but there are use cases where uh, they want to be able to mount uh, some um, uh, fine file system like TMPFS or PROCFS or whatever um, without uh, giving more privilege. 
and they use uh, SecConf to um, to catch the mount system call and send it to the agent outside of the container that will perform the mount on the container's behalf. And there are other use cases with uh, EPF system call. And, uh, so I don't want the different, um, the different use case to be tied to OCI or, um, or NC, but uh, to provide a mechanism so that uh, people can write the OCI config.json um, and um, call uh, an external agent to uh, do system call on the behalf of the container uh, for specific use case. Um, I don't know if actually that's something that uh, other people in this call or elsewhere have tried to do for NC, or is it, if not, I've not seen uh, this. Yeah, before. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, you don't. You don't have a lot of RunC maintainers on the call tonight, but or today. But the, yeah, the, the topic. The topic in general, I don't think has has really surfaced. Okay. So Alvin, just um, it, it looks super interesting. I, it, is, uh, it, it helps. So what we've been doing with the weekly calls, because they're weekly and there's just completely random content from week to week, meaning that there's, there's just different groups. So we've been trying to make sure that we get the agenda up beforehand. Um, and I, I try to send them out by Monday at the latest. And Amy reminds me and says I'll be having this meeting or not. Um, so that people will know to actually come to the meeting this week. So like, I didn't, I don't know when you posted it. I missed it until I just saw it now. Um, there's a dev alias, uh, is it dev at open containers? I just typed dev and autocomplete up. Yep. Um, if you just send this information there and maybe let's say two weeks, you know, come back, uh, you might be able to get the folks that really dig into this spot to kind of call and have the open discussion because like I said, I was looking and I don't know, Mike, and um, I'm trying to think of who else here would actually really T details on Tiana, this. Tiana might dive into this one also if he gets a wild hair, but. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We all have wild hairs these days. If it, if it wasn't SSC comp, I'd be really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, uh, no, uh, So on, if you go look at uh, github.com container D slash NRI, there's a, a, a new interface service that's being promoted as an alternative to the hooks process uh, in RunC. Uh, the um, you could probably do an SCC comp, you know, uh, plugin in NRI, and it would be fairly interesting as as a way to model how, how to do this. I think um, very similar to what you have, but you wouldn't have to use a hook, right? You just you just install your plugin and boom, right? It would get run. Could you give a link to the GitHub uh, page you mentioned? Yeah, it's just uh, container D slash NRI is the uh, is the brand oh, new okay. repo. Michael Crosby's working on it, and I'm I'm sure he'd be very welcome to have more people testing it out, right? Adding adding new types of plugins. Just just a thought, just a thought there, because um, we had talked about it not not just a few months ago um, for the COD stuff where we're going to add additional device support we were going to do it via hooks process. Um, this Renal and Renal P and, and a bunch of the Intel guys and NVIDIA and all the other Kubernetes COD guys. And, and, and Michael sat back a little bit and said, wait a minute, let me do an interface. <laughs> okay. Um, so you, you yeah, take a look at an NRI. Uh, that's the uh, node resource interface uh, and see what you think. Okay. And I'll, and I'll, yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Thanks, I got that link. Okay, yes, it makes sense. And I can uh, come again in two weeks or whenever to talk about this again. Yeah, I was just suggesting two weeks because it'll give some time for people to look at your doc and get some people to talk about it. If you, if you got people interested and want to come next week, by all means, put it on the agenda. Um, I'll put yeah, it yeah, I'll give this a review. I'm curious. I'm, I am curious. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Um, I don't think we have anything. Also, also we, you know, 
it's 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 worth noting that this recording will end up on a YouTube channel, so we can point to this the point in time that you've already given this overview, and uh, they could hear that you know the the ten minute pitch as well if they don't just read the notes and whatever other supporting docs. Actually, that's a good action item for us to take. We've been horrible at taking notes during the meeting, but we've been getting the videos. If we could at least put the time when we change topics into the notes, then people can mm. record the video. Yeah, it, it's 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 kind of neat, and I've I've wished that Google uh, YouTube would get better at the transcriptions, but mm. um, yeah, it, it it does help sometimes. Um, any other freeform topics that anybody wanted to share? It's good to see everyone. <laughs> Nisha says with her camera off. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why the camera is off. No, that's that's fair. That's fair. I'm not. I'm not pushing. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. As a teaser, some things to come. Um, the, we're obviously making some pretty good progress on the notary work. Um, we'll have some more distribution spec proposal changes, including the refactoring work around the um, various manifests and Go libraries. We've gotten some interesting conversations around what should be moved and, and so forth. And um, the metadata API stuff that we've been toying around with is a conversation for a long time is coming up again. Um, there's uh, basically, I, I, so I've got some proposals. I'm trying to get something written down for people to review, but uh, that I'm hoping to make some progress on as well, um, which I'm gonna remind Vincent again, if you don't come up with something better, I'm gonna propose an, uh, a dictionary list with a clearing house of names of like registries can just say yes, no to a, a, a list of strings or something, so. yeah. It, it, that's that's pretty much that was my original thought with that with that extension proposal and I think we went off the rails and into the weeds as far as like the the big the big thing really that became the sticking point and it got nicely philosophical but the the reason is that we were thinking that there would be some top level like extensions so that if you're adding actual API endpoints like REST API endpoints, mm -hmm. everything would be nested under like a slash ET, ET, EXT. But effectively that negates or, or flies against the ACLs of any other repository where we, you know, you might say VBATS my app is a private app. Mm -hmm. And so all the other API endpoints are nested under VBATS slash my app slash whatever else. Um, and so it became of the mind that like effectively one of the goals of every registry owner is to main, manage ACLs. And if you have something like signatures or whatever else, then you have all kinds of like information exposure or even just flush, flush attacks or whatever that would, should be nested under the ACL. So now you have this extension that describes endpoints that just go back into the base um, um, base API. Yeah. And so yeah, just having, really just having some like basic JSON array or dictionary that says those, you know, like, you know, like if you do system CTL, system cuddle, dash dash version, you see like plus FIPS, plus IMA, plus SE Linux. That's what, I, that's what I was hoping for. But the fact that it would push those things back into the main namespace or ba base main endpoints was less than ideal. So I, I, I wish I could rethink that, but um, maybe there's Let's an incremental, that incremental step. Because we will hit that with Notary too. I, I forgot about that part of it. I was thinking just what is a registry support from capabilities? Like, you know, for instance, artifacts, all it really requires, is, do you have an index? Well, actually not index. Do you support additional media types? That's all artifacts really requires from a registry operator. Right. But so there's no API change. But to your point, when you do have well, API, even 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 that even that query is going to be tricky since some of them do, you know, allow lists and some of them do deny lists. 
that you can't just say, you'd almost have to like incrementally say, do you support this mind type? <laughs> no, it's, could... it's fair. That's fair. And I think uh, Mike or somebody had given big feedback on one of the APIs they were proposing. But the, the point is that you're, you would kind of take it to the next step of saying, great, if you're going to have an extensibility on the registry and you need an API, where should you put it? And I, I'd forgotten around that aspect and we will hit that because there are two different styles. There's a registry do domain is broken up amongst people through a root namespace. And then there's the other registry pattern is the registry is owned by the domain and everything in the root is, but even that we're, we're, we're changing even an ACR because we're going to be adding like an org management kind of feature within a single registry. Right, yeah, which is fine if you want to get tier into that, but that still means that if somebody adds an extension for new API endpoints, it's it could push at various points in that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to consider. But I, uh, on the fundamental, I do like saying, here's this concept like multi arc, like signatures that like yeah, I support that. Go here for more information on how we Im implemented it. Um, and even if that's like JSON schema or something, then I don't know that get, I could get really creative really quickly, but that, that part I like the managing how it handles with, you know, ACR, GCR, Docker hub, Quay, and, and not making a security nightmare uh, is, is a, the next hairball. All right. Well, we're going to walk right into that problem because we are introducing some new APIs for getting a referral list in the notary stuff. So we're going to have to brave through that problem regardless. So let's, if we could figure it out there, then maybe we can figure out how we can define that for new extensions to add APIs. Mm. So hopefully this isn't a once monthly inclusion that we will be able to join us next week. Okay. All right, we'll give people, let's see if somebody else has any other topics. Going once, going twice. Yeah, oh. and, and, our, and our two speakers it was very late for. So thanks for Adrian oh. and Albon. Yeah, thanks. A thanks a a a Adrian, you're, you're in Scotland and thanks. Albon, you're in Germany, so. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what were you about to say, Josh? I was just gonna uh, point out that we did get the reorganization merged. So there's still a bit of work to do before we cut a uh, release candidates and Peter and I are working on that. So, um, but a lot of great progress and thanks to the maintainers for helping push that through. So a silly question, what happened to all of us that have docs that reference markdown files and anchors? All your anchors are broken. Yeah, it's all broken. I mean, all of it's broken. I would, yeah, I was assuming there's no magic redirection happening. That's, that's what you get for pointing at a pre 1.0. Well, if somebody over there would actually ship this darn thing. I, th I, think, I think we tagged an RC0 for you. <laughs> I think there's still a spec file. <laughs> it's not going to be as bad as you think. <laughs> I was just, I was, I remember Josh, you were talking about doing some kind of magic redirection thing. I can't remember what happened with that. So. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's fine. Um, I, I guess at some point, just just to clarify, Josh, Josh has worked mir miracles, but I don't think that miracle is in the is in he the. Had some bucket. frog tool or something. I forgot what it was called. It was, it was some weird name. But anyway, um, just I think the, probably the best thing I would say is just declare when you're done, so people know to update all their links, so we don't have to update them all. Yeah, one dot oh. If if you have any problems with like the with links breaking, just open an issue and we'll. Um, Oh, yeah. Well, well, broken links within the document, yes. But yeah, if you're I'm pointing, if you're pointing to the spec, it. then wait for 1.0. That's what I was going to If you're if you're, ever, if you're ever referencing a master, you know, you know, main trunk head, whatever, then expect it to be broken. So actually, it's a good point. Can because I just did this on artifacts and auras and a couple. Are we ready to take change master to main in this move too? We uh, can I, yeah, I think I think there was a GitHub thing in the works last I heard. Yeah, the 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 last time I investigated it, 
there was some issues with everybody who'd opened a pull request against master, it would close them or whatever. Um, and I'm pretty sure they worked through that and I have not investigated since then. So we still have open PRs on, I guess we do. Yeah, okay. but I just, no, no, but it, the topic hasn't particularly been surfaced as a change to main. I know that at uh, Kinfolk, we've already started rename, repointing some of our branches to main. Um, but that that was one repo, low hanging fruit repos that didn't have open PRs. So. No, that's fair. I, I, and I actually don't know if GitHub is trying to do something where if you open something into master, you change the name, it just redirects. So um, mm -hmm. that'd be an obvious cool thing to add. All right, I'll leave that one alone. So uh, where are we? Since we do have a couple of minutes, where are we in declaring a 1-0, Mr. Bats? Mm. <laughs> Hot potato on your plate. <laughs> That's what you get for showing, for disappearing and showing back up. Yeah, fair, okay. Josh wants me to say yesterday, um, <laughs> at least by the end of the month. Now, um, the, there, there, I, I have not, compiled that as a, as a you know, timeline in my head just now. Um, a lot was going into the mini updates that were broken down that Josh just alluded to or were merged. Um, I think there's a few cleanup. There was some hope around the extension proposal, but that was post 1.0. Um, there is, yeah, so, so that, 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 uh, that is something that I've had sitting in my inbox for a little while. And unrelated to that, also a runtime spec 1.0.3, um, but the, the distribution spec 1.0 is obviously got eyes on it, and I don't have an estimation on that. Josh, yeah, maybe, Josh could maybe. honestly tell me, Josh could probably honestly tell better what he sees as a blocker for 1.0. Um, I, <laughs> I, um, I, if, if I'm being optimistic, I think an RC1 is in the span of a few weeks, considering maintainers are available to review stuff. So okay. it, there was a meeting we had that was like, here's a few outstanding stuff. We need an appendix. So I'm working on that now. And if that can get reviewed and merged, I think we're ready for an RC1. Is 182 ready for review? It is not. No, I should just close that. Sorry. And I given, it on it then. Give, given the fact that, unlike some of the other ones, we were kind of working from something that's fully in in industry adoption. We were just making it. Um, we had good iterative conversation, but we also were basically working with cleaning up what was already fully adopted. Um, I don't think I don't foresee that we're going to go through the same kind of RC cycles as we did for the image spec and runtime spec. I think that's been long agreed. And that's part of why the incremental rewrite that uh, Josh and Peter just went through um, was so meticulous was that making sure we didn't lose anything there. But it's basically what already exists. So probably we have an RC, I could imagine having like an RC one RC two, and then go. Um, but RC1 in the next couple of weeks would be super. So something that's come up a little bit when, when folks last time we talked about uh, adding config to index and moving the schemas up into artifacts to kind of pull out of the image spec. Um, we also noticed that there's some duplication of things from image spec and distribution spec. There's some Go libraries. Oh, for, oh, for sure. And definitions and some of that. We, yeah. Hopefully we address some of that, but yeah, there's definitely Lots of carryover. What is, we only have a couple of minutes left, so maybe I'll make this a topic for next week. But I think that was the question is, do we, do we clean up some of that refactoring so that we don't have weird duplications? And then- We had, we had two answers, right? One would be to say, this is from some other place. Some of the, some of the text was built. So take it back, three answers. <laughs> some, some were code built, some, some were, you know, this is cited, we're not, you know, no edits here, please. And, and others were, yeah, we probably can delete that, right? So there, there were definitely three answers. Okay. Oh, are you saying? And, and we need to sit, we need to filter well. through it. We need to go through the, you know, line by line from the original and make sure. That are you all. saying that we do that for the image spec as well? 
Well, for me, I'm not saying what 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 was interesting. I mean, with respect to this one, I agree with you, Vince. This right. th this won't take as long. <laughs> it's not going to be as hard and as, and as tedious as it was to get the image spec done. Yeah, in this case, what we're just saying is, do as part of the cleanup, do we lift them up into artifacts and start using that as a, a focal point for where these live because they get used in multiple places, um, but instead of them being duped, and do we want to put that as part of the 1.0 spec of distribution, and do we want to add config to the 1.0 spec of, uh, of distribution? Um, so that's that's a conversation, and I'm fine either way. I think there's some motivations for one or the other, but um, we should figure out. I, I, I just think I, we, we believe that signatures is a pretty big thing that people are looking. We're seeing more and more and more pressure on it on a weekly basis. So um, anyway, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put that up for next week's conversation. Um, well, I'm hoping to have the metadata API conversation next week and the uh, some of the distribution spec uh, conversations on which fall out of that, uh, fall out of notary. And maybe we'll just, I'll see if I can get something pulled together on the uh, various Go and schema library references that are, that are there. So. All right, well, that pulled up the last couple of minutes of the hour. Um, cool. Thank you again for our pack. Are the, are the videos getting auto uploaded or is that a task? It is an auto upload of Amy. Uh oh, maybe is our audible. Mm, actually, I think Phil's been doing it recently, but I'm happy to be able to drop some in. No worries. Huh? So yes, it is all very manual. I'm just making sure it's it's shareable at some point in the next days. That's all. Yeah, I can we've take been a getting better. They, we've been getting better about it, and I really like the idea of let's let's keep notes of the agenda items at this minute into the the call, so this way it'll align with the videos. Amy, does the video, I guess, the, does the video start on the hour or does it start when the first person starts? Whenever browsing? the room opens. Yeah, it's pretty great too, because you'll get some like drive by, somebody forgot they dialed into it, and it's like one person sitting there for five minutes. It's pretty great. I like to call through that recording box every so often. <laughs> All right, so I will take a look and figure out does, does the video, does the recording, Amy, have a reference to actual time? Or to be like 15 minutes in, which could be 10 minutes after the hour because somebody dialed in five minutes before. So, what hmm? happens instead is that YouTube will give you an auto transcript of what was said at which point in the video. Zoom itself does not give you any of that. Yeah. Okay. So, what I was thinking we would do was in our notes for next to each agenda item, we'll note down what time that topic started. This way somebody can scroll forward to that point in time in the video. The problem is, is that if the video started 10 minutes before the hour, then we're gonna be off by 10 minutes if I just note the time. That's why I'm wondering if there's some way to correlate a time, time coding. Um, I would actually suggest being able to have people look through the auto transcript of um, YouTube and find like the point which they're actually looking for because that's a really easy way to scrub. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see if we can. I'll, I'll take a look at what we have and see if there's uh, something other than a scrubby looking list thing. Or maybe, maybe the transcripts are good or not. I don't know. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. We'll see everybody next week. See you all. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.